the XFX3 is an expensive piece of gear. Here's why. So uh, just a quick demo today. I just want to show you one thing I've been playing with on the uh, XFX3 here. I have it running through a uh, MOS Valve Tube Works 1160, which is an old uh, solid state power amp that I've had for ages, running into the, the two, uh, running into the 212 Avatar cab. Uh, and this is really the first time I've ever run it into a real cab, and I have to say, this is where it's at. It is not hard to get this thing to sound awesome uh, running through a real, a real cab. So I have the Friedman. Uh, Brown Eye, HBE, Friedman Harry Brown Eye version three. And uh, as I play here, uh, what's gonna happen is um, you can set most of the parameters to be controlled by the pitches coming out of your guitar. It's a really simple concept. Basically, it's like a tuner. You know, a tuner hears your frequencies, analyzes them and tells you whether or not you're sharp or flat or however close you need to be to whatever pitch you're trying to achieve. Same thing happening here, only what it's doing is it's recognizing my pitches and then it is adjusting parameters accordingly, okay? So a couple of things I've done here is I've made it so that pretty much when I'm below the 12th fret, uh, you don't hear any phaser effect. <laughs> When we get above the 12th fret, we start to creep up and our frequencies start to get higher. The phaser starts to kick in a little more. Which is what I like. That's when I want my, fa well, that's when I want my phaser to happen. Uh, so what's happening is for the phaser, the depth control is going from zero to about uh, 10 or thereabouts. And then the mix is going from zero to 50% as we, as we creep higher up the neck. Another thing that I have it doing is as I get above the 12th fret on my just regular old amp controls, you know, I have bass, mid, and treble. Well, the uh, Friedman HPE, it gets a little scratchy for me above the 12th fret if we don't do anything. So what I've done is as we get above the 12th fret, uh, my treble backs off and my mids push up a little bit, right? Uh, so as I play, you can kind of see those parameters moving around. <laughs> So if you happen to own an XFX3, here's how you're gonna accomplish this. So let's say, for example, we wanted to uh, make it so that our drive increases the higher we play on the neck. All we're gonna do is go over to our drive control here. We're gonna right click on it and it'll bring up this uh, edit modifier uh, where it says none for our source. We're gonna change that to pitch follower. And now we can sort of define our range. So if we want it to be, you know, at about, uh, I don't know, 4.01? Can I type in? I can't type in a whole number there, and that bugs me. Uh, but uh, oh, around 4 for our uh, minimum. And then when we get above that 12th fret, we want to crank it up, you know, to like 7.5. That's all you do. Uh, that's it. And then you can close out of this window and you're good. Now your drive is going to be controlled by how high you play on the neck. So that's just one of the cool things you can do with this piece of gear. Uh, that level of control opens up all these windows, all these doors of just amazingly 
intricate and customizable cool things you can do to make the amp and the effects adapt to your playing uh, depending on where you are on the neck. So I just thought that was cool and I thought I'd make a quick video to, to demonstrate how that works.